Okay, uh, UConn will be here in just a few minutes. We will, just a couple of announcements beforehand. Again, as a courtesy, please uh, silence your cell phones, either put them on vibrate or turn them off. Uh, no recording of press conferences on cell phones, cameras, anything like that. We have microphones on each side. Just raise your hand when we get to question and answer. We'll get to as many as we can. Obviously, locker rooms are open, so we, you can get some of that stuff at the locker rooms as well. Please provide name and media affiliation before asking your question. We are on Zoom. People that are not in the room but are on the Zoom call, if we have time, we will get to, to questions from the Zoom. Uh, Hammond Communications is posting recordings of all the press conferences. You can find them in the Digital Media Hub, which is ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are being provided by ASAP. Those are being posted shortly after each press conference. And I think they're also making hard copies and putting them in the workspace. So UConn should be here very shortly. All right, we have UConn up on the podium. Huskies advance to Sunday. They will play Northwestern. In a second round game, we have head coach Dan Hurley. We have grad guard Tristan Newton. We have sophomore center Donovan Klingen. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, then we'll go to questions for the student athletes. Dismiss them, go to questions for coach. But coach, if you want to start. Yeah, love the, uh, obviously love the start. Uh, it's exactly how you want to start a game like this, where you know, you're, you're uh, you're in March Madness, you know the history of these, you know, number ones or high seeds and just they took away all hope uh, in that game from them early on with the defense, with the, with the offense, with the uh, relentlessness. So um, we have to a pretty good first performance. Okay, questions for the student athletes. No question. Okay, we'll start up here in front. Go ahead. Yeah. Tristan Donamori from the Hartford Current. It looked early in the start that Coach was talking about, like you guys had the, the lob pass uh, anytime you wanted it. Was that kind of the plan coming in to kind of <clears throat> establish that and then work off that? Uh, I mean, you know, coaches do a great job putting us in positions to make plays for others, and uh, uh, coach gives me the freedom to make the read, so and he gives me a lot of options. So um, there is either a drift, a lob, or um, you know something will be open. You know, coach told us uh, just play our offense and we'll break down the defense. So uh, that's what we did, and the lob was open early and throughout the whole game. So just read what's going on. We have two great lob finishers in Donovan and Sampson, and just make the read off the screen. We'll stay here right in front of me, row one, Jaden. Donovan, Jaden Daly, Daly Dosa Hoops. Last year, playing behind Adama gave you a, a little different perspective going into the tournament. Now, with more of a larger role expected from you, how much did that experience prep you for this season? And Tristan, can you follow up on what you've seen from him and how last year has helped him out? Yeah, I mean, you know, Adama prepared me for, for everything the way that, you know, we battled against each other every day in practice. And, you know, how, how hard he plays and, you know, just watching him on the floor and seeing the role that I had to, you know, step into when, you know, he get, came off the floor, um, you know, so, you know, just playing behind him and seeing how dominant he was and everything that worked for him um, definitely helped me, you know, coming into today, coming into this tournament, just realizing that, you know, Dama was very dominant last year and led us, you know, throughout the tournament. So, you know, I'm just trying to carry on that role of being as dominant as I can, as impactful as I can, and, you know, just trying to help my team win. Tristan? Uh, yeah, Donovan has grown in so many aspects of the game. You know, he's a, he's a great leader for us, and, you know, he dominates the paint, plays great defense. So, um, you know, the, the role that Adama had last year really helped him out, and, you know, he stepped up big this year, and, and that's what we need from him throughout the whole tournament. Any other questions for the student athletes? We'll go here. We'll go row three on the end, and then we'll go to Zach on row three. For both the players, does it feel different taking the court as the defending champions this year as opposed to last year? Start with Tristan, and then we'll go to Donovan. Um, I wouldn't say so. You know, last year, um, we, I mean, we go into every game expecting to win. So um, I don't think 
coming from last year, winning the whole thing is it, it feels any different. You know, it's a win or go home game every season. So uh, to to me personally, it feels the same. Yeah, I mean, I felt like you know we just attacked it like a regular game, just trying to go out there and beat you know beat our opponent. Obviously, we know what's on the line. You know, it's win or go home. But um, you know, we really don't think about you know just what happened last year. We're really just trying to you know, achieve a new goal this year with this team and, um, you know, really just trying to attack it one game at a time. All right, we'll stay on this side in row three and then we'll come down to row two. So if you can hand it back first and then, yep, then we'll come to you next. Zach Brazil in New York Post, for either of you guys, what, what has stood out to you about, about uh, Castle and just how, you know, he's obviously a highly rated freshman um, and just kind of how he's seamlessly fit with you guys this year. Let's yeah. start with Donovan and then we'll go to Tristan. Um, you know, I feel like his toughness and, you know, his willing to stop the other team's best player. Um, you know, he really just wants to guard at a high level. And, you know, in the locker room today, he just came in at halftime and was like, you know, I'm trying to hold this guy to zero. Um, you know, so really, you know, he's just such a unique player in the way that way that he guards, you know, how tall and strong he is. And, you know, on the offensive end, he's you know, setting ball screens, coming off ball screens, getting to the rim, finishing strong. And, you know, he's just an all-around team player. Offensive rebounding, you know, just, you know, he saw that dunk where he missed and got his own rebound and put it back up. You know, he's just willing to make, you know, multiple efforts. And, you know, he's a really big part to this team. Tristan? Yeah, I mean, like Donovan said, he goes out there and guards the best perimeter player every day. And um, I don't think he gets enough credit for that because he sacrificed the offense and, you know, looking good for everybody else just to, um, stop their best player. He's he's um, maximizing his role and he he's helping us a lot. So um, he's really improved throughout the season. Last two for student athletes. First one here and then down there. Go ahead. You guys had a pretty good game. Is there, are there any areas that you want to work on before round two? We'll start with Tristan. Yeah, definitely. Um, they shot twenty free throws. We had to we had to guard without fouling, and um, you know the defense was spotty at times. I mean, not the defense. The rebound was spotty at times. So. Um, I feel like those are the two areas that we need to work on the most. Donovan? Yeah, I mean, I feel like just, you know, rebounding the ball, um, you know, going to Sunday playing the Big Ten team, rebounds the ball well. Um, you know, I just, you know, me and everyone else just got to, you know, really attack the ball with two hands, you know, on the defensive end and, you know, to be able to push in transition and, you know, really, like Tristan said, just, you know, guard without fouling and, you know, play smart. All right, other side of the room here in the front row. Go ahead. Yes, I'm Bill Hathaway from Local Talk York. Uh, this a message to, uh, for Tristan. Give me your feelings and your perspective about today's game. Uh, we got out to a fast start like we wanted to. We played uh, great three-point line defense. That's what the emphasis was going into the game, uh, stopping the front three-point line because they're a good three-point shooting team. And um, I feel like we moved the ball effectively and turned the ball over. Um, let, well, more than we wanted to, but, um, you know, I thought like it was a pretty good game, but we have areas to improve on. All right. Tristan Donovan, we appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Sure. All right, we'll take questions for Coach Hurley. We'll start a far side in the, on the end, row four. And then we'll come up to row one on that same side. Hey, Dan, Ralph Russo from AP. You know, it almost sounds a little cliche, that idea. If, if you let these underdogs hang in the game, they get, they get confident. But it does sound like you, that may have been part of the messaging to the team. This fa like emphasizing that kind of fast start. Yeah, I think we Can we get Coach Hurley's microphone hello, hello. on, please? There Am we I go. On? All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, that's what everybody wants to do in this tournament. It doesn't always work out like that. Um, so that's not exactly like you know, high level coaching. Everyone wants to start fast, um, but they just had our respect at a high level coming in. I respect the heck out of Donnie. Uh, and his staff, and uh, you know they won at Central Florida this year. You know they played the three bye games. Obviously the Houston opener. You know they got jumped, and then uh, but then they you know they you know they they won at Central Florida, and they were right there versus Cincinnati on the road. So you know they, we, we, this week we were uh, you know we were nervous about the matchup because of the shooting, and, and it wasn't just the backcourt which is tremendous. They had shooting all over. Uh, and they had size at center. So I, I thought we had the, you know, I thought they should have been a 15 seed um, for me. Uh, I, I thought they were the hardest 16. Um, 
and as the overall number one seed, I, I was surprised that, in my opinion, you know, that, that we got the, the best 16. We'll stay on that same side in the first row. Go ahead. Dave Borges, Hearst, Connecticut Media. Dan, did, was it good for you to see some zone there? And you saw some in the Big East, but not a whole lot. But um, and how do you feel like you did against it? Because I know there are one or two sequences where you didn't look too happy. Yeah, I didn't. And, and they, you know, they mixed them up, and that's what they do. Some one three one, some some two three, some three two, some switching one through four, some switching one through five, on ball, off ball. They did a lot of different things out there. Uh, Obviously, at halftime with the 15 assists, two turnovers, we were shooting 70 percent. Um, you know, it was hard to be disappointed about a bunch of things there. But you know, second half, human nature kicked in a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we, we missed some really good opportunities and some good shots, and weren't able to sustain, you know, the level that we played at offensively in the first half. But uh, you know, overall, there's so much pressure. We all felt a lot of pressure going into this game. Uh, you know, it, it's hard not to, um, as great as you feel about your team, because, you know, you just don't want to be the, you know, that, that one seed that, especially with the, you know, our last, you know, the last year that we've had since this time last year. Um, okay. Come to this side of the room on the aisle, row two with Adam. Dan, did you or your team watch the Kentucky game? Did you talk to them about it at all? And you know, as far as an upset, and what is the art to balancing integrating talented freshmen with older players, which you've obviously done well, and some other teams have struggled? Yeah, I think you, you know, number one, you got to insulate, you know, big time freshmen like, you know, Steph Castle, you know, or, around the core of returners to your program every year, and then supplement, you know, with the portal. Um, so you, you, you can't miss on high school kids. You can't miss on player development. Um, I think you got to do it in a strategic way. And then obviously Jalen Stewart, you know, is another freshman that, you know, right now is, is helping us as a freshman, but then has a chance to be a star as a sophomore. You know, so I just think there's there's a timing and a planning uh, that that comes that that, that you know the, the way that you construct and architect uh, your roster, and it's got to be a mix of portal. You know, high school players insulated by also a core of returners to your program, and you know, I, I didn't. We, we we know what this tournament's all about. I mean, we, we stay bulletproof by being a lead on offense, a lead on defense, a great rebounding team, um, and then obviously the preparation with Kamani Young with the scout today to do what we did defensively versus a very very hard to guard top hundred offensive team it was impressive. We'll stay on this side in row three in the middle. Uh, Zach was on your post. Dan, do you, do you think you can win with, in this day and age, do you think you can, teams can win with one in the group of one and done freshmen, or do you think now you need that experience to win? Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting now, I guess, the, you know, the G League Ignite, uh, I guess that thing shut down. So, you know, maybe, maybe more, you know, more of those difference making five stars I think it just a lot of it depends on the mentality I guess the culture of your program the, the mentality of the kids you know that you recruit I mean there's a lot of you know um, there's a lot of pressure in these NCAA tournament games it's unlike anything else in sports for these freshmen man to uh, you know to go on the court and to be a two seed versus a 15 or a three versus a 14 and the arena turns on you as the higher seed and now you're surrounded by just a bunch of other young talented freshmen that have never swam in these these shark infested waters man that's where you know I think Steph Castle and, and the way that we have our situation set up is uh, he's got some men around him out there uh, and just a great mix of youth experience and a core of returners that understand the culture. We'll do two more questions. We're going to go on this side, row two. Raise your hand just real quick so Coach knows. Okay, go ahead. And then Hi. we'll come back here. Hi, Dan. Uh, Connor Sargent, The Daily Campus. And I just had a quick question for you concerning um, when you come into this game, obviously it's do or die. But coming in, you were favored by 27 and a half points, and you got up early. So my question is, what, what do you tell your team when you guys are up that big and it feels like the game's in control? What, what, are, you, what are you looking specifically from your team to do in that so-called garbage time? Foot on gas, foot up. We'll finish. Uh. Last question here. <laughs> Last question here in the front row. 
Jaden? Dan, you talked about needing the dominant performance from Donovan yesterday to win today. How much did you like what you saw from the big guy? Donovan was awesome today. Um, you know, you, you, you see the, you know, he's just a game changer, what he creates for us on offense, you know, how he spooks people at the rim, the, the rebounding presence, uh, you know, the fire and the life that he shows up with every day. And, you know, just to have the balance around him, to have five starters today, you know, eight, eight attempts, 11 attempts from four guys, you know, our All-American point guard only took eight shots in this game. Obviously, the strength of this team is is just the versatility of the five starters, and obviously, you know, six through eight now on the bench is giving us big time stuff. But Donovan is, uh, you know, he's the centerpiece. All right, Coach, we appreciate Thank it. Thank you. We'll see you Sunday. UConn locker room is open, players and coach, for another probably 15 minutes or so. All right, Setson's on the way. It's just a couple of announcements again as we wait for the Hatters. Uh, as a courtesy to fellow media members and participants in this press conference, please silence cell phones, either put them on vibrate or turn them off entirely. A reminder that recording of the press conferences on cell phones or cameras is strictly prohibited. Um, we do have a Zoom call, so if we if you want to ask a question and you're on the Zoom, not in the room, just raise your hand. If we have time, we will go to those questions. We have microphones on each end. So if you have a question, when we get to the Q&A part, just ask, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over to you. Please give your name and media affiliation before you ask your question. A reminder that all of the 
press conferences are being recorded by Hammond Communications. They will post all those recordings afterward in the NCAA's digital media hub at ncaa.veritone.com. That's ncaa.veritone.com. All transcripts are being provided by ASAP. Those will be posted shortly after, also in the media hub. They will also have hard copies in the workspace. All press conferences are up on satellite. The upload link is SES3 slash 17KA9. The download frequency is 12026.5H. Okay, we have Stetson up on the podium. We have head coach Donnie Jones. We have senior guard Stefan Swenson. We have junior guard Jalen Blackman. We will start with an opening statement from coach, then we'll go to questions for the student athletes, dismiss them, and have questions for coach. But coach, if you want to start with an opening statement. Yes, uh, well, first of all, let me start off by saying uh, thank you uh, to these two guys to the left of me here. Uh, you know, Steph and uh, Jalen, what they've been to this program this season has just been uh, incredible. What this team, along with these two guys, have been able to accomplish at Stetson for the first time in the history of the school was something that can't be taken away from tonight's performance. So I just want to start off with that. As much as it hurts uh, that we fell short tonight, uh, I've never been around a a group of guys like this. I've had some special teams I've been a part of, but these two guys have been so servant, so sacrificial, and so impactful with how they show up every day and come to a place that has never done it and took a chance on us here. Uh, I just want to thank those two guys uh, to start this off. Questions for the student athletes at this time? We'll start here in the aisle in row four. Jerry Beach from Field Level Media. Just, you know, obviously the game just ended, but can you kind of appreciate what you guys did this year and we did for the program, like Coach was just saying, doing something that's never been done in program history before? Start with Steph and then we'll go to Jalen. Um, obviously, um, been for four years and this year was really special. Every year I've been part of it has been special, but this year was just a group of guys that understood the sacrifice it takes to make it this far. And um, it's just been unbelievable um, what we've been doing, obviously. We fell short tonight, but um, just appreciate all my teammates and my, my brothers that made all the sacrifice for this year. Um, yeah, uh, being around this group has been the best year of my life. Um, I've gotten so close to everybody in the program, and it's tough to lose this game, but we've done so much this year. Um, that's the first NCAA tournament, and um, it, it was a great year. Come here, same side on the end, row two. It's such a big lead so quickly. We'll start with, uh, let's go with Jalen first, then Stefan there. Um, they're a really good team. Um, this is our first time being at the, in the NCAA tournament, so maybe a little jitters. Um, mm -hmm. But when we settled down, um, we proved that we could we could um, compete with them, so we'll be back and try to do better next time. Yeah, like like, like you said, <clears throat> obviously the beginning of the game we we never found a rhythm, kind of hurt ourselves hurt ourselves there, but uh, we saw the second half that when we just kind of play our game and play loose and and kind of embrace the stage, uh, great things can happen for us. So it was a great experience. Go in the back, stay in front of me in the back row. Um, Curtis Rouser, Slam Magazine. For Jalen, um, what are some ways you're looking forward to really building on this year? Like you just said, it's a few jitters your first time um, this, with this team. So um, how do you plan on building on this season and just continuing to lead this program? Um, well, first, we don't want to wait another 52 years or 53 or whatever it was to get back to another NCAA tournament. Um, we want to make this a thing where we're getting here every year. 
And just getting used to it, getting used to playing in big games like this um, will be helpful. Any more questions for the student athletes? Okay. Steph, Jalen, we appreciate you taking the time. Stetson locker room is still open at this time. I think it will be for another 10 minutes or so. Uh, at this time, we'll take questions for Coach Jones. Again, raise your hand and we'll just give name and affiliation before asking your question. Hey, Jerry Beach, Field Level Media again. Uh, what did you think in the second half? You know, you guys had a little bit of run. Your fan base got into it. You know, every trip down was a pretty loud experience. Every dunk was a loud experience. What was it like, you know, hearing them enjoy it, you know, for the 40 minutes and two hours that they had tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, you walk in there at halftime, and, and obviously a lot of guys were uh, discouraged uh, because felt they didn't get off to a great start. A lot of nervousness. I knew hopefully some shots would go down. Uh, early for us to kind of break the ice a little bit and get a little momentum. Thought we had some stops there. We kind of hung around, then all of a sudden got down to 8-0. But I thought at halftime, you know, the biggest thing I told those guys right now is, hey, pick your head up. It's zero to zero. I wrote on the board. I don't care about the score right now. I care about how we play for 20 minutes. So let's pick our head up. You guys made it this far, uh, and we're going to go out and we're going to show everybody that you guys belong here. And so I thought we took a breath. I thought we came together. Uh, those guys battled. Uh, I wrote the word pride on the board because this team has been all about pride all year long. Uh, we've overcome a lot of stuff uh, on our team. Uh, we lost Josh Smith, uh, who's an important piece, and we've had a lot of different things where guys have stepped up, but these guys have continued to be a team all year long. So my biggest thing with them was uh, it's going to be how we finish today, and uh, we're going to be proud when we walk off this floor. We're going to go to the other side of the room on the far side. Go ahead, Ralph. Coach Ralph Russo from the Associated Press, obviously they're very good and you could see that from the film, but when you play them, is there something that is, do you think maybe catches your kids off guard a little bit? Oh, they're this good, especially when they were really locked in today. Yeah, outstanding. I mean, you can't, you can't create that environment in practice. You know, we could practice for 30 days. And the size, length, athleticism, those teams I was a part of at Florida, we had those same guys. I mean, there's a reason we won national championships because after the first five, there was another five. And they just wear you down with length. They got a lot of different weapons, big guards. And so our guys, you know, just trying to learn to play against that. You think you're open, but you're not. And the physicality for our guys was just uh, at a different level. So we have played some teams this year uh, that had that, you know, in the Big 12 and different things. but not to the level that we saw today. So I give Dan Hurley credit with the job him and his staff have done with this team. We'll go back to you, Ralph, and then we'll come back into the middle. Yeah, I'm sorry, if I can get just a follow-up here, Coach. And sure. You mentioned those Florida teams, and that's the last team to, so obviously they're getting compared mm -hmm. to that because that's the last team to repeat. Again, maybe it's a little bit of a cliche question. Can you compare them? You, you said there are some similarities, but could you compare the two? Yeah, yeah well, they got four bigs that can play, which is, uh, important and we had that as well. Uh, the other thing they have is experience. Uh, I think they, they've got uh, a lot of guys, some guys have been a part of that. I know they lost some pieces, uh, but they have five guys double, average and double figures, uh, which we had. So it's not one or two guys that's going to get you to the finals. It's going to be your team can score on a given night. So uh, they're very efficient uh, offensively. Uh, they don't beat themselves. They rebound. They defend. Uh, they they do a great job. Obviously, they're terrific. Their staff is terrific, well coached. So, you know, that doesn't guarantee you're going to win it, but it gives you a chance. You know, we always felt, can you put yourself in that circle and have a shot? And uh, with those kind of weapons, you know, I could see them having a great opportunity for that. Next two questions will be here on the aisle. We'll start on row four on this side, and then we'll go across to row three on that side. So right here at row four. Yep. Did you, did you raise your hand, didn't you? Okay, then we'll go row three on this side. We'll use that microphone. That's fine. Hi, Sherry Taylor, New York Beacon. Hi. Um, seems like you guys came out with more energy at halftime. Do you think so? And what was your message at halftime? Yeah, yeah. As I mentioned earlier, my message was, uh, you know, just about those guys. Zero to zero at halftime. Pride was what I wrote on the board. Uh, did not care about the score at that point. Uh, just wanted our guys to go out and show the level that we could play at that got us here and uh, to go out and have no regret in these last 20 minutes. So I thought those guys band together. Uh, they're a different group. 
Uh, this, this group has, wasn't picked to win the win A-Sun. This group has believed in themselves. And all the way to the final buzzer, uh, I told these guys, uh, you know, they're a, they're a special group with how they continue to handle themselves through winning and losing. And, you know, there's no loss with our group tonight. You know, the victory's already been won. Uh, the brotherhoods, the relationships, the stories these guys will have from a lifetime, the history they made at Stetson, to see the fan base ch change at Stetson University, how the universities come together, it's only going to rise. So we're thankful that they've been the pioneers to take this place, this school, to a place they've never seen before. All right, we'll go the other side. I think we do have a question now, yes? Yeah, Coach over here. Uh, you know First of all, what were the last 12 days like for you? You were on the first teams to clinch a berth, so you got to, I guess, enjoy it for a while, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there was a lot of celebration, uh, which was which was great. Uh, we had a lot of practice time. Hey, believe it or not, maybe we didn't look like it in the first half, but uh, but it was a great uh, community uh, opportunity for us and our school to really celebrate you know, this milestone that we accomplished. Sharing today with the fans, like I said, they were pretty into it in that second half. You know, it came up a long way, obviously, from, from Florida. What's it like sharing that with them? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking that question because I'd love, love to talk about that. I'd love to just thank the, the Hatter fans, uh, our administration, Jeff Altier, our athletic director right there, for believing in me, uh, giving me a chance here, our president, uh, Roki. Uh, just, just thankful for uh, what these uh, past players, past fans, past students, it has been humbling to see the amount of people that's come out come out and celebrate us here in New York, all across the country, parades on our way out of town. Uh, I've never seen such a community come together uh, during this situation. It's been very, very uh, humbling. We're going to stay in this section in front of me on the end, row three, just yet. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, Ryan Morick here with uh, Fox News. Uh, I don't want to make you sound like a broken record. It sounds like you are very happy with uh, how they went out, but you've been discussing pride uh, since the start of the second half. Did you guys give you that? They did. Uh, I definitely felt we accomplished that, and um, that's who we were this whole season. Uh, this group was a unique group. Uh, this is a group here that never quit. Uh, Regardless of the score, uh, they've been very resilient. Uh, there's a lot of tears in that locker room. There's a lot of respect in that locker room. And uh, these guys truly love each other. That's something we don't see in teams a lot. Uh, a lot of guys are individuals. They play for themselves. And even if some teams are winning, uh, they're not tight like this. But this group really come together and really believed. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Congratulations on a historic season. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hi there. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yep. V E R I T O N E. You got it. Let me ask in the back room. I think you probably will be able to take them, but let's, because I think we have all the, all the players.
thought you said, could I have the, could I call the event? Because I didn't want to call the event.